my name is Matt Guy from Geometrics Earth Science. In this short video, we're going to talk about the contact resistance checks, which need to be done before performing an electrical resistivity ERT survey. In this case, we're using a Syscal Pro 72 switch, which performs an RS check, which looks at the contact resistance of each electrode sequentially. No matter what array we use, we need the contact resistance to be below 2 kilo ohms. If the electrode is planted near an insulating body like a rock or maybe a small void or cavity, then that will increase our contact resistance. Also, if there's any corrosion on the jumper cables or the takeouts, then that will increase our contact resistance value. When we're doing a Venner array, we need the contact resistance to be below 2 kilo ohms. And it is imperative that it, the contact resistance of every electrode is below 2 kilo ohms for a dipole dipole array. Otherwise, the standard deviation values for each of your quadrupoles will be high and that will lead to poor data validity. We're now going to move on and look at the electrode spread. The Syscal Pro will run an RS check at any time. Just go to Tools and then RS check. It will run through all the electrodes and report the contact resistance values. Any that are above 2 kilo ohms, then you can go in, identify that electrode and remedy the problem. The RS check looks at the contact resistance between two sequential electrodes. So 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, etc. So what you'll end up getting is two high contact resistance values, say 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, which will identify that electrode 2 is actually the electrode causing the high contact resistance values. If an electrode isn't connected or it has an extremely high contact resistance, then a 999.99 kilo ohms measurement will be reported. It will be highlighted black and the RS check will not proceed until you have identified that electrode and remedied the problem. You can continue on with the RS check by pressing the enter button. We're now going to go and have a look at the electrodes and see what we can do to improve the contact resistance values. At this electrode, we had a high contact resistance reported. And there could be a couple of things which can cause that. Predominantly, it would be corrosion on either the clip lead or the takeout of the cable. The first thing that we can do to improve that is just give the connector a quick wiggle, which will scrape off any corrosion built up on the copper takeout. If that doesn't solve the problem, then it's potentially that the corrosion on the clip lead itself is too great. So we can just use a wire brush or an abrasive paper to take that off. Do not use a wire brush or abrasive paper on the copper takeout itself, as this could break the filament and then damage the whole cable. The next thing that can cause a problem is if the electrode is positioned near a rock or uh, a small cavity. These insulators will cause the current to deviate around the electrode and the contact resistance will be higher. Now, a rule of thumb is that the electrode can be moved plus or minus 5% of what the electrode separation is. So in this case, our electrodes are separated by one meter, and therefore I can move the electrode within about a 10 centimeter area uh, without having any significant problems when coming to perform the inversion. And what we just do is we can just move the electrode slightly and then go and recheck our RS values. In very dry conditions or arid environments, then it might be necessary to water the electrode in. So if you use a 1 to 10 ratio salt to water solution, saturate the area and then place the electrode, then you should improve your RS values. If it's particularly arid, then I would recommend laying your spread out the night before, watering in the electrodes, and then coming back in the morning, adding some more solution and then conduct your survey.